<laughs> do you want to learn how to program the best water softener valve in the business, the mighty Clack WS1? Now these valves are used on iron filters, they're used on water softeners, tannin filters, backwashable filters. Some have five buttons, some have three buttons, some have four buttons. Surely the programming must be different for every application. Well, you're right, it is. So if you want to learn how, if you want to learn each one of those uh, different uh, configurations, I'm going to go through them right now. Hi, I'm Gary the Water Guy, and I simplify water filtration to help you conquer crappy water for your family. So tonight we're going to be going through each one of these valves, and uh, we're going to be talking about the programming. Uh, we'll be talking about what, pro what part of the programming you definitely don't want to touch, and uh, what part of the programming you may want to touch. Generally speaking, they're uh, pretty much right out of the box, but if for some reason there's a problem with yours, or you're making some modification for yours, that's what we're going to be talking about here today. I'll also be talking about um, when you get a new um, clack water softener, like these Hume, um, water, uh, these Hume water softeners of ours that use uh, clack valves exclusively, then uh, what kind of settings you'd be doing right from the beginning. And uh, I'll show you how, actually how super easy it is if you just follow along and the different uh, configurations. Now, whether you're watching this live with me tonight, and I do appreciate you watching live and submitting your questions and your comments, um, or whether you're watching the replay, there's going to be a ton of information here. And if you notice me glancing down, that's because I'm checking my cheat notes, because again, I want to make sure I don't, uh, I give you all the information that uh, I'm planning on uh, tonight, and I don't want to miss anything. And the, the, of course, the advantage of the replay is you can go back and you can uh, uh, check. What did Gary say that day about that? And uh, you can check that out. And uh, there's links in the description down below uh, to a lot of the things that we'll be talking about here today. And uh, so you can definitely check that out for other videos that pertain to something that we're uh, talking about. And uh, all of the products we're uh, going to be talking about here today are available on our e-commerce uh, sites, watereastore.ca in Canada, watereastore.com in the United States. And I definitely encourage you to uh, check that out. And uh, so, all right. So where are these uh, valves used? So the valve is the part at the top here, right? And that can be used for a number of different uh, products. Primarily they're used on water softeners. That's the main usage, of course. But um, they're also used, like I say, on iron filters, tannin filters, etc. And the programming can be totally different, somewhat different, partially different, but it's very important. The programming is very important for whatever you're using it for. And, uh, and that's uh, something that uh, you gotta make sure is in place. Um, um, I'm also going to share it, like I said, I'll, I'll share the settings with you that when you're first installing one of these uh, systems, uh, what you should be looking for. We'll also be talking about twin tank systems too, by the way. And uh, um, whenever you, one thing I should mention right from the beginning is whenever you make any changes on this, uh, when it's a brand new installation, you have to leave it plugged in for 24 hours before it retains those settings. So don't plug it in, make a few changes, unplug it, and go do something else and come back and wonder what happened to your settings, it's because it needs that 24 hours to, uh, to retain those settings. So definitely keep that in mind. Also gonna have some bonus content at the end. And what do I mean by bonus content? Well, some folks have ended up with a three button valve like this as their water softener. Um, I get a lot of calls about that. And, uh, and that's, not, that's not good. You don't want a three button valve as your water softener because that's a time clock water softener, which is very, very inefficient. But the bonus content's gonna show you how with just by changing three parts, you can modify that three button valve to a five button valve, one of these uh, CCs. And, uh, but we'll be talking about that a little bit later on. So you definitely wanna hang around for that. Now, these valves are sold under a number of different, um, these clack valves are sold under a number of different brands. So ours is Hume Water, and uh, that's, that's our, uh, and all of our Hume products are all sold under the clack name. So, but also water softeners by Water Depot, Nelson, Viqua, and a whole lot of other uh, companies are clack valves. They're just branded under their own names. So how can you tell a clack valve from the others? Well, I find the easiest way is to look at the top. So it has some very distinctive uh, features about it that are different from um, other water softeners. So the injector is inside here, this round cap at the top. The, um, the bypass has these red handles. Now there's a few others out there with red handles, but Clack is the only one that has the pointy, pointy ends on them and they're sort of arrow shaped. 
And uh, so definitely look for that. And then look for the configuration of, where am I here? The, the brine connection up here and the drain connection up here. So like I say, so don't look at the front of the, the valve to try to determine if it's a clack valve or not. Look at the top and uh, that will be the, uh, so those kinds of things are uh, giveaways that it is a clack valve. And uh, so going through this, if you're not 100% sure how a water softener works, I definitely uh, suggest uh, you want to check that out. So again, I've got a great video on exactly that topic, and there's a link in the description down below. You want to check that out. In case you're, conf you know, if you're not 100% sure, if we're talking about programming, it's not going to help you a lot if you don't know uh, how these things work. So, uh, all right, great. And... Um, and uh, during this presentation, I'm going to encourage you to put, some, put down your comments and your questions. I'll be stopping from time to time to answer those questions. We've already got a bunch of questions up there already. And uh, when I do um, uh, check out your questions, I'll be happy to put them up on the screen, just like that one there, on my comment that I uh, put on here earlier to invite you to join my live, screen, uh, live stream. And uh, definitely uh, want to put your comments on there. And like I say, we'll, we'll be stopping. So one of the questions I'm often asked is, I've got this water softener. I know it's a clack water softener, but I don't, didn't get a manual for it. What do I do? I didn't get a manual. Well, in the newer ones, it has this QR code. You see inside here, this QR code? Get the light on that. And with the QR code, if you've got a, an iPhone like I have here, you just open up your camera app and go to that QR code and then at the top here you can see it it comes up and it has the valves on there and then you just select whichever one you have and it'll take you right to the quick start manual now you probably can't see that from the light but anyway it takes you right to the quick start manual so those are so basic kind of settings right the time those kinds of things how the bypass works etc but if you want a full in-depth manual again I've got it in the description down below so you can definitely download that uh, for your valve and uh, and remember when I was talking a little bit earlier about three button four button five but what's Gary talking about three buttons so this one has five buttons on the front five control buttons this one has three buttons on the front there's another one that has four buttons on the front the five button ones are uh, done in different configurations but the programming is all the same doesn't matter how uh, sorry the five button in a one row across is one set of configurations the the ones where five buttons are it, like in two rows like this or one row and then two buttons like this those ones are all the same it doesn't matter. So again, um, if you're looking for an in-depth manual that you want to download, it's in the description down below. And uh, so, um, okay, so we're going to start with this valve here, which is the CC valve. Uh, that's, that's what it's sold as in Canada. In the U.S., it's often called the CI valve, it's Canada International, etc. And uh, so, so when it's, um, so let's just go over the buttons here quickly. And uh, I can probably zoom in here. Let's try this one. There. All right. So in the valve here, you can see the five buttons here. And the top left one is set clock. So obviously that one's for setting the clock. You just press it. You can press the hours. You can set the minutes. And then you can press next. So that's the next level of a program you want to go to. Regen, that's for initiating the regen cycle. And by the way, a lot of these buttons you need to, if you press them twice, um, it, or sorry, two buttons at the same time, it'll do something else. And again, we're going to get to all that in just a second. This is up for uh, increasing the number that's on the screen. This is down for decreasing the number that's on the screen. And uh, let me get back in here. And uh, so then the normal operating display. So, so normally you see the time illuminated here, but if you press the next button, when it's in its home position, it shows zero, zero. So if you have a meter hooked up, and you'll know that you have a meter hooked up to it because I don't, in this one right now, you'll, you'll find out why I don't have it hooked up right now. The meter goes in on the side and you'll see this gray cable coming from the side. And the gray cable goes up inside. But if you have a meter hooked up, this is your flow rate. So if you go somewhere in your home and run some water, it'll show you how many gallons per minute flow rate you have uh, flowing through the valve at this particular time. And... So the next setting we can go is its capacity uh, remaining. So 
once it's gone through its regeneration, it gives you so many gallons of capacity. So this is now set up as a water softener, so it's showing there's 1,200 gallons um, remaining. As that meter counts down the gallons, it's going to count down this number, and it's going to tell you how many gallons you have remaining before, again, it goes through another regeneration. All right. So, so sometimes um, the valve is locked. So how do you know the valve is locked? Is when you go into the next and down, and hold the two buttons together, and it doesn't go to the next screen, it just stays where it was, that tells you that it's locked. How do you unlock it? You just go down, next, up, set clock, and now it's locked. And then to unlock it, it's the same. Unlock. So you just do that configuration. And a number of, we don't lock the valves. Um, but a number of the manufacturers do. So that's a very handy thing to know if you want to get into uh, do some programming on those. All right, let me get back to the main camera. Okay, great. And uh, so let's move on. So we're also going to be talking a little bit about the, uh, the twin valve, uh, or sorry, the twin tank with one valve, but twin tanks. We'll talk about the programming on that. So if I mention twin, this is what I'm talking about. This is a picture here. It's not a, a water softener that you would see every day. And okay, so first of all, we got to talk about the sequence set setup. So now you have to press next and down twice to select the valve size, or if it's a single or a twin. Okay. So so this is so now you're setting up the sequence. So again, you press next and down. You hold it down until the screen changes. Actually, let me zoom in there again a little bit better for you until the screen changes. Once the screen changes, then you do it again. I mean, no, I didn't wait too long. Okay, so these this settings here are super critical. So this is very, very important. Folks that have problems with their, their valve settings, it's often because these are wrong. So this is 1.0. This just tells you that it's a one inch valve, and that's what this is. 99% of all the residential ones out there are one inch valves, okay? If you go up to 1.25, then it's for a one and a quarter inch valve. So this is one of those settings you don't wanna mess with. If yours is a one inch valve, like pretty much all residential ones are, make sure you leave it on that, okay? So there is another setting here that you have to be careful of. So I, I had a, a customer uh, recently that got a new uh, tannin filter from us, and every time he, try, he plugged it in, every time he tried to do some programming, uh, let me go back so you can see me. Every time he tried to do some programming, it, it, it kept saying uh, error 106, error 106, and we couldn't figure out what the problem was. And the problem was it wasn't set up properly. So if... I'll get back out there. If, for example, you press this and you get to this 1.0T, and I'm not going to leave that very long because it's going to that's, that's telling it that you've got a twin tank, okay? So if you're telling it you've got a twin tank and you don't have the, the cable hooked up for the twin tank, it's going to go into error, okay? So again, it's very important to, uh, put, to put it in 1.0. Okay, the next setting is Alt-Off, okay? So if you have... A twin tank that has two of these valves, you'd be turning alt on. So it'd be an alternating valve water softener, okay? But that's not what this is. So this is a single valve. So we leave that off the way it is. So we go next and DP off. So again, DP is uh, it's for a dip switch. Again, it's for a very, very advanced. You have to realize that these valves are scaled down versions of industrial valves. And uh, so because of that, they're used for all kinds of different applications, big in hospitals, in hotels, um, like I say, in all kinds of different configurations. But, um, but the programming is all there if it's needed. But if it's not needed, you don't want to access it. All right, let's move on here. Okay, so then, so now we're telling it um, what cycles we want. So the first cycle we want is a backwash cycle. So again, I'm going through this as um, I'm going through this as though this was um, an ordinary everyday water softener at this point. That's the programming we're going through on this CC valve, which is the top of the line valve, by the way. All right, great. So, so that's the first cycle. Is you're going to go to backwash. So we're just telling it now what order the cycles are in. So you press next, and it's going to go down. Okay. So it's the second cycle is a down brine cycle. 
Okay, so this is for um, a post fill water softener, not a pre fill water softener, a post fill water softener. So you want to go down. So the next is you're going to do another backwash cycle. So again, these are the ideal settings. Now, if you're in a situation where you've got very little water, or you're worried about running out of water for whatever reason, maybe your well has a limited capacity, you may want to skip this cycle and you may want to change it to the next cycle, which let me just go there for a second is uh, the fourth cycle is rinse, okay? So you may want to skip that second backwash cycle. And how you would do that, I'll just go back one, and you can use the regen button at this stage to go back one, okay? And how you would do that is you just go into here and change this to rinse. Oh, I think I missed it. Change it to rinse, that would be the third cycle, and then the fourth cycle again, we'd advance one. But we're not doing that, we're leaving this in backwash. Because that's the ideal. There we are. So then we go next. So the fourth is the rinse cycle. And then the fifth is the, fins, the, the fill cycle. And the thing you really got to remember is you always have to put end. The last one always has to be end. So with this CC valve and why it's a premium valve is that you can put, you can put up to nine different cycles on here to do all sorts of different things. But again, normally for a normal water softener under normal circumstances, you wouldn't be doing that, okay? All right, so, so now we've set up the cycles. So let me just go back in here. And I see we're getting some comments, so let's have a look at uh, some of those comments. And uh, I'm just gonna flip over to that, and we'll go back to, to uh, here I am again. So. Uh, Okay, great. So let's just see what we've got uh, coming in here. Uh, put that up there, and this here, and uh... all right. So we got a, a comment from uh, Vintage Fan Ten. I always use clack valves, best valve all around for sure. They are. They are absolutely great. And um, and like I say, if you didn't think so already, once you've gone through this uh, uh, live stream with me today, you'll, you'll understand what I'm talking about. It's amazing what they can do and, uh, and amazing how reliable they are. I just had somebody the other day that was saying, okay, so what, after 10 years, you have to replace the motor? I said, you know what? I don't know how many years it's going to take to replace the motor. The valve's been around for just over 20 years. I've, been, I've handled them for 19 years. I've never replaced the motor. So I don't know how long it's going to be before you re replace the motor. Um, okay, so Maxter, I ask, uh, oh, sorry, this was a two-part question, I think, here. All right, send. Whoops. Sorry about that. Maxter, hi, Gary, I'm on well water. Clear water tastes great, only 10 par parts per gallon of hardness. I use a sediment filter along with a water softener. What kind? Oops. What kind of RO do I need that there's only one filter? I've never heard of an RO that has only one filter. We're getting a little bit off topic here, but uh, generally speaking, the least amount of filters in RO I've ever seen is a three-stage RO. And uh, you really need those pre-filters for that RO because uh, you're gonna have problems if you don't. So uh, I definitely recommend it. And the filters aren't all that expensive. And um, so, uh, and uh, Maxter's uh, second question was, uh, the only season with a minimum of three filters. And like I say, I've seen them out there with three filters, um, but uh, uh, we're on well water. Our water tastes great, and uh, we have a five-stage uh, reverse osmosis. So, um, so we've got one here from KB. I'm on mom's phone, and this is in her recommended. So that's great. I'm glad mom isn't. I'm sorry mom isn't watching today, but I'm glad you are. So that's great. Anyway, keep those... Um, Keep those uh, messages coming. I really appreciate them and, and the comments. And uh, if you can get some questions uh, on topic, I'd love to hear them. So uh, anyway, let's, uh, let's move on here. And uh, okay, so we've done the sequence, the cycle sequence. So let's go on to the next stage. So now we're gonna do the softener setup settings. So to do that, we have to go to the next and down button, but we're gonna go once this time, not twice. Okay, so we'll go next and down. Okay, so you see in the top left-hand corner, it says softening. Um, here, let me zoom in for you. You may not see it. It may not be very clear on your screen because I've zoomed in quite a bit. But it, it, you see something flashing up there. And like I say, if you look at it closely, it, uh, it says softening. So you need to make sure it says the softening. If it says filtering, 
that's not the right settings for a water softener. So make sure it says softening. And then next. So now what it's going to those that sequence we set up earlier in terms of this the the, the cycles uh, sequence that we set up earlier. Now we're able to set the time within e within that sequence. So the first one is the backwash time. So the first backwash time we always recommend is eight minutes. And again, if you wanted to change that, you could go up or down. Okay. Why would you want to change that? Well, again, maybe you're you're tight for water. Uh, maybe it's a well or something like that and uh, you're tight for water and uh, so you can back that off a little bit a minute or two off each cycle will make uh, quite a difference in the amount of water that it's going to use so uh, so that's something uh, you can keep in mind all right moving ahead so then we go next so now we go to the brine cycle so this is where it sucks the brine out of the brine tank and uh, so again this is uh, set for uh, 60 minutes and by the way when we did the sequence earlier uh, we set the the brine for down brine not up brine down brine Okay, and uh, so you can see it's, it's showing here down brine. And then next, and uh, so then we're into, um, into the second backwash, so eight minutes. So again, if you want to, uh, you can cut that down by a couple of minutes and um, to save water. But normally, you got to realize anything you do, anything you do that, that's going to compromise the performance of the water software is going to show up here, is going to show up in the end result. So like I say, be careful of the settings uh, that you choose. And, uh, and the reason I'm showing you the default settings here today is because if you get messed up uh, fooling around with, with these settings, you can always go back to watch the, the replay of this um, live stream today and uh, you can go back to uh, changing your settings. So then we go next. So four, it's a rinse and I think it's set for what, four minutes? Yep. And then the fifth one is um, the salt in pounds. So generally speaking, if it's a one cubic foot or 30,000 grain water softener, and it's a uh, standard resin, then you're looking at about 10 pounds of salt per regen, okay? So this one's set for nine and a half, that's fine. But uh, so, so that's where that setting would come in. And, and how does it know how much pounds? Well, so let me, so what's it talking about? How many pounds? How does it know how many pounds it's, it's gonna use? What happens is um, a gallon of water will only absorb so much, uh, let me get back in here. A gallon of water will only absorb so much uh, salt, okay? So, so what it does, it will put so many minutes of water in there, which will, will equal the amount of water that will consume nine and a half pounds of salt. That's what that setting means. So, uh, so it's pretty cool stuff. All right, let's get back to the zoom here. There, all right, so we go next. So now we're, we look at the capacity. Okay, so the capacity of, so again, this is a 30,000 grain water softener. So, um, hey Gary, if this is a 30,000 grain water softener, why is this set to 24,000? It's because it, you need to set it for 80%. That's where it's the most efficient. Okay, so if you got a 60,000 grain water softener multiplied by 0 0.8, that's 48,000. That's what you would be setting here. So again, it says 24.0 times uh, 1,000, so 24,000. Okay, so that's how that's uh, set up. All right, let's move on here. Okay, so let's continue next. Okay, so Regen Auto, what's that all about? So what that's telling it is that it's gonna monitor how much water you're using um, because this is a uh, metered water so Whoops, that's not what you wanna see. You want to see that. Um, it's going to uh, monitor how much water you're using and then it's going to um, regen based on that usage. Okay, so that's what the auto means. It's going to keep track of the gallons that it's going through and that's where you want to set that. That's the default setting. And then down here it says normal. So what it, that means is it's going to calculate how many it's going to calculate reserve capacity and it's going to make sure that you don't exceed that reserve capacity. So it's going to regen in time so that you always have softened water. Okay, so you can also change this to different settings on zero. So a twin tank water softener would be set on zero, which means that once the one tank has, excuse me, the one tank has been exhausted, then it's going to switch over to the other tank. So with a, um, a single tank water softener, you don't have uh, you don't set it to on zero, you have to have that reserve capacity. But that's why a dual tank is, um, is more efficient than a single tank water softener. All right, so we'll go next. And salt off. 
Okay, so there's salt settings in here. You can actually set the salt. You can program it, and uh, it'll tell you all kinds of stuff. It's not worth it. I always leave this off. It's just not worth the grief. I just got a call from a customer last week, I think it was. Someone had been fooling around with these settings, and sure enough, they set the salt on, and uh, the <laughs> poor lady uh, just bought the house. She says, I filled that brine tank full, and it keeps saying, need salt, need salt, need salt. So I just uh, helped her. I just went out there, helped her. I set it off. Everything is fine in the world. Like I say, it's one of those sounds neat to have, but it's just not worth it. And then press next, and we're back to the time. All right, so. So what are the installer settings? So those are the basic settings. Now we've told it that it's a water softener. It's a, a post-fill water softener. It's down brining. Uh, we've given it the basic parameters. But when it comes time to installation, now we have to, it's set up for its own use, but it's not set up for your use for your household, okay? So now we have to do that, okay? So now if we press next and up, these two buttons together. All right, let me zoom in again. There you go. So you can see it's showing 20 on the screen. So again, we can change it. So these are these. this is your hardness setting. So for the hardness setting, it's actually compensated hardness. So you have to do a little bit of calculation. So let's say you have a hardness of 10, that doesn't mean you set this at 10. If you're on well, well, if you're on well water and you have, uh, let's say, one part per million of iron, and you're going to use the water softener for removing the iron and softening the water, you need to compensate for that iron content in the water. Okay. So, for every one part per million of iron you have, you have to add five grains per gallon of hardness. So in this example, you've got a hardness of 10. You've got one part per million of iron, so 10 plus 5 is 15. So if you set it for 15, no, because there's always a little bit of slippage. So to be on the safe side, we always add 2. So 10 plus 5 plus 2 is 17. So just use the arrow down button to 17. Once you've set the, done the right setting, you just click to move forward. So, and we'll just flip over to here. So the default base. And uh, so people often say to me, Oh, so this is going to regenerate every 14 days? No. This is the day's override. And what that means is, if you haven't used up its capacity within whatever day's override this is set for, it will automatically go after that. Why would you want that? So again, um, a water softener has to regenerate every 14 days because you have to kind of fluff up that media to every 14 days otherwise it can become hard and that's one of the problems with putting in a water softener that's too big especially if it's in a cabin or a cottage type environment where people aren't there full time people don't live there so in scenarios like that you have to make sure you set that day's override and like say 14 is is the, is the sweet spot it doesn't waste a lot of water doesn't waste a lot of salt but it, it takes care of that water softener and not every water softener valve has that the clack does and again that's another great feature that i really like about the clack valve because where we are up here 100 miles north of Toronto, um, this is cottage country. And, well, other than this year, people aren't at their cottages all that much, except for, you know, a couple months in the summertime. So, uh, so anyway, that's an important setting. So, all right, let's move on. So this is the regen time. This is uh, when it's, go through, it's going to go through its regeneration cycle. To, it's going to clean itself, right? So um, we try to set it at a time when there's very low water usage in the home. Usually 2 a.m. is the default time. So... Just be careful, the AM is in the, in the top right corner, okay? So you have to look at that kind of carefully. It's a little hard to see, and often people mistake that for AM, for PM. So you just have to make sure. Anyway, you can see the two is flashing. That's because we can change the hours at this point, either up or down, and then next. And then we change the minute at this point, either again, up or down, and next, okay? And we get back to the, the home screen again. So, which is, uh, you know, showing us the time. now. <laughs> When it comes to regen time, again, if you're on well water and you have multiple pieces of equipment, like a water softener, an iron filter, a tannin filter, something like that, make sure that you're not regenerating them all at the same time. They can't all regenerate at 2 a.m. because you don't have enough water to properly regenerate each one if they're sharing that water. If you've only got nine gallons per minute in cottage country, that's fantastic, nine gallons per minute. 
and you divide that by three, now you've only got each piece of equipment has three gallons per minute to be able to regenerate and it won't regenerate properly. So stagger the times. I usually like to set the water softener for 2 a.m. because that's the default. And then I like to set the iron filter at 1 a.m. It takes about 45 minutes. We're gonna to get to that fairly soon. And then the, um, if we have a tannin filter, I usually set that at 4 a.m. And, uh, and again, that's one way in the future if someone goes in there and they're not sure which one's a water softener and which one's a tannin filter, um, that's a bit of a clue. So uh, anyway, okay, let's, uh, let's move on here, folks. And great. Okay, so let's talk about a tannin filter. So <laughs> for those of you who don't know, what's a tannin filter? Um, again, people that rural in rural, they sometimes have brown water, like a, a shade of brown comes out of the tap brown, that's tannins. What's tannins? Tea is tannins, wine is tannins. It's a coloration of water that's being caused by an organic, okay? Um, iron's a mineral or a metal, right? Um, this is an organic. So often in cottage country, um, we have decomposition of cedar roots and it tints the water and then we end up that. Okay, so let's change the settings here and we're going to do the, the same settings except we're going to change it for, um, change it into a tannin filter. Okay, so we go to the next and down and we set it for softening. So I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Gary, you just did a tannin filter. Shouldn't this be set a filter? No. A tannin filter looks like a water softener, works like a water softener, uses salt like a water softener, so it still has to be set for softening there. Sorry. And then next, so we do the, uh, the, the cycles. So the cycles are the same. Eight, eight uh, backwash, 60 minute brine cycle, eight, another backwash, four minute rinse, and this is where things change, okay? So instead of salt being set for 9.5, we change this to 14. So every time a tannin filter regenerates, it uses 14 pounds of salt. Next. Okay, and we set the capacity. So the capacity can still be set the same. And then we go to auto. Well, it's not auto. But it, we're going to change this, and I'll explain in a second why. So we're going to change this to 500. Okay, so a tannin filter is different than a water softener in how it operates, and that's why we have to change these settings. And then we go next, and it says normal, and we go next. Okay, salt off. Again, that's a pain. Okay, and then when we get, and I'll explain just a little bit more in just a second, and then we get to the installer settings. Okay, regen day, we have to change this now to three. Next. And again, we would set this for 4 a.m. if there's a water softener. Okay, so what did we do there? So what I did was I changed the settings so that it's going to um, regenerate every three days or 500 gallons, whichever comes first. Why is that? Because with the tannin filter, you can't leave the tannins in there longer than three days. So you have to clean it up, okay? So, but... Again, these are often in cottage country or vacation type areas and things like that. So what happens is every three days regenerating might be fine when there's two people there, but it's a holiday weekend, it's a long weekend, you got 12 or 15 people there, people running in and out, they're showering all the time. They may burn through those 500 gallons in one day. So you don't wanna have them burning through the 500 gallons and then for the next two days have tannins in your water. Hey, what's going on? This thing isn't working. So it automatically regenerates after five days. But if you haven't used up its capacity, it re regenerates after three days. So again, that's a critical difference um, with a, a tannin filter compared to a water softener. Um, and, uh, but like I say, all the other settings, all the sequences, all the other stuff is the same. So check that out. Air over media iron and sulfur filters. So again, the same valve can be used for iron filters. And uh, how do you know if you got air over media iron and sulfur filters? You got one of these, okay? And uh, this is there, okay? This is, this is where it sucks in air. Where does this go? It goes right here instead of where the brine connection is on a water softener, okay? So if you have one of these, you've got an air over media system, okay? So, so now we have to do is, uh, again, we have to uh, change some of the settings. All right, so we press next down. See where it says softening up at the top? Now we're gonna change that to filtering because an iron and 
and or iron sulfur filter is a filter. Okay, so we change that to filtering. Okay, and then next. So we're just going to go through these settings to the end. Okay, so now um, we have to uh, go through the, the, the sequencing. Okay, so next and down. Hold that down. Screen comes up, you have to do it again. To get into the sequencing, you have to do that twice. Okay, so again, you set the valve size. 1.0 is what we have here. So we're going to move on there. Alt off. So again, we don't have twin um, iron sulfur filter with twin valves, so it leaves us alt off. DP off. Again, we don't have a dip switch uh, attached to this. And then we have, so the first stage is backwash. Okay, so um, for backwash, um, we go 15 minutes. Uh, sorry, we're not to the time yet. Sorry, the, the first cycle is backwash. I'm getting ahead of myself. So then we go next, and the next one is down brine. But in this case, it's actually air draw. But unfortunately, the terminology on the valve is still down brine. Okay, and then we go next. Okay, that's it. it there's only two cycles. So now we have to put the end in here for this one. Okay, so you go up here, two, three, end. Okay, and then next. All right, but now we have to go back into next and down. And again, we're set at filtering, right? Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see a little bit better. This one, yep. Okay. So we're set on filtering, so you go next. And so the, the first cycle is the backwash. So this one we're going to set to 15 minutes. That's the first uh, backwash cycle. So you're going to backwash all of that iron and uh, oxidized sulfur out of here to the drain. And then we go next. So this is the air draw. This is when we're going to draw air. So again, we're going to change this to 30. So you can adjust these settings a little bit, okay? If you, if you find that you're running out of air too early um, or something like that, then um, what you can do is you can adjust this a little bit to draw air for a little bit longer time. If you find that your water's kind of milky and that because there's too much air in the water, but it clears from the bottom up, you may want to reduce that a little bit. But I always suggest you start from these settings, okay? So we'll go back into here and next. And, uh, and then of course the next cycle is off. All right. Okay. So let's uh, move ahead with that. I'm going to back here. Okay. So the sol so the installer settings. Let let's do those. Go next. You zoom in here again. So the installer settings. Again, you go next and up. So every three days. So again, iron is a similar situation to um, to the tannin filter in the sense that you want to um, regenerate it every three days to again fluff up that media and and to keep it loose. Okay, and uh, so that's why you need to set that for every three days, and uh, the the time. So again, I would normally set this at 1 a.m. if I had several pieces of equipment here, so it doesn't conflict with the others, and then press next. We can set the minutes. And then uh, we're back to the time. So, uh, so you know, those are the basic settings for that. And let me just see here. Um, okay, so let's talk about a twin softener. So the twins are becoming more and more popular. And uh, so why is that? Well, th they give you no soft water. Sorry, they give you no hard water any, at any time. So when this valve is, is regenerating, and like I say, as a water softener, it would be regenerating for an hour and a half, uh, you have no soft water. Now, typically we set it for 2 a.m. in the morning. Other than the odd toilet flush, usually there isn't too much water being used at that time. But there are scenarios where the twin tank, it would be to an advantage. And, uh, and by the way, I should mention that um, uh, all of these Hume all of these uh, Hume uh, water softeners and twin tanks, etc., all available on our website. And uh, and like I say, that website was uh, watereastore.ca in Canada and watereastore.com uh, in the U.S. So uh, definitely uh, 
I want to check that out uh, sometime. But anyway, um, so there's times when you want to have 24-7 um, soft water. When? Uh, in situations, maybe you've got multiple homes on the same system and people work shift work. Uh, maybe it's a restaurant, coffee shop that's open 24 hours a day. Or maybe you've got a whole house reverse osmosis system and you want to make sure that you're never getting hard water through that system because maybe your water is extremely hard. Um, another, it's talking about extremely hard. If your water's a hardness of 40, 40 or 45 or more, a twin tank is definitely the way to go because you don't want to introduce any hard water into that system because it'll, the hard water is so hard, um, it, it's, it's going to raise the average hardness up quite a bit. So uh, anyway, so that's, uh, so, so that's why you'd want to consider a twin tank um, water softener. And uh, okay, so uh, let's go through the settings uh, for that. And uh, and by the way, I should mention, um, I'd really like to uh, in, encourage you to uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already. Great information like this uh, presented all the time, and you'll be notified about the new videos as they become available. And uh, so you definitely, uh, like I say, I encourage you to, to check that out. All right, moving right along. So again, so we're going to start, uh, so we're going to set this up as a twin tank, okay? So, and, and again, this would be useful if you've just recently purchased a twin tank. And, uh, and you want to set it up or you want to check the settings or you want to you know, understand a little bit more, this will be especially helpful for you. So again, we press next and down once and twice. All right, 1.0. So again, we use the arrow. Let me switch over so you can see a little bit better. We use the arrow up and we're going to go to 1.02. T. I know it doesn't look like an actual T, but it's 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 the best they could do, I guess. And uh, so I have to change it out of that 1.0 T. Uh, let me show you inside here. So if this one was a twin tank, it would have a cable connected up to right here, where it says yeah, right here where it says MAV. Okay, that's where the cable would be connected up. And because this one doesn't have that cable, it would go looking for that and it would put it into air. But for a twin tank, you'd have to have that connected. Okay, so once you've got that connected, uh, all right. So, um, okay, great. So, so then we go uh, next. And again, so this is alt off. So it's a twin tank. This is a twin tank. Okay, whoops, what are we doing there, Gare? This is a twin tank, okay, but it's not a twin valve. So if it was a twin valve, we would be changing this um, this to alt on, but but it's not. It's it's a single valve with two tanks. Okay, so alt off stays. And then we go to next DP off. So again, there's no dip switch that's being connected to this. And then we go to, uh, where are we here, Gear? All right. And then we, the, the cycles are the same. First is backwash. Second is brine. Third is not the end. So third is now, can you remember what third was from before? I can hear you yelling backwash. You're right. Yeah. And then fourth, no, it's not the end. What's after the fourth is, yeah, rinse, yeah, you got it. Fifth, is that the end? No. Oop. Oh, I gotta start over again. Sorry about that. Okay, so next, alt off. DP off, backwash, brine, backwash, rinse, and fill. Got it. Okay, and end. Next. All right, so we've done that. So now we have to go through the next set, and that's next and down. Hold that down till it changes. So again, I had this on filtering because we were looking at it in terms of an iron, iron sulfur type filter, right? The air over media type system. But now we have to change this back to softening because this is a twin tank softener that we're doing here. And we go next. So backwash is um, eight minutes. That's right. 
brine uh, draw is 60 minutes and then we go to um, backwash eight minutes and then we go to rinse four and now we go to pounds of salt so again for pounds of salt uh, we look we are looking at um, for pounds of salt again we're looking at nine and a half or ten pounds so we go next and uh, so capacity yeah we can leave this at uh, 24,000 uh, but we're going to get into some arithmetic here pretty soon so capacity again would be 0.8 so if each tank is 30,000 grains if you've got a twin twin 30,000 grain so each tank is 30,000 grains you would again set this for 24,000 next okay so now this is where things change so it's not set on auto we have to do a calculation because what it's going to do we have to calculate how many um, gallons of water it's going to consume per tank before it switches over to the other tank so again we have to do some calculations so let's have a look at that uh, now and uh, and again remember we're talking about uh, twin tank water softeners here and and again you can see um, one valve two tanks and uh, and that's how they're configured in case you're wondering what is this guy talking about at this stage okay so these are the calculations that you would need to do so cubic feet of media so the size of each tank in grains so 30,000 um, 30, uh, grains per cubic foot okay so let, let's use an example of a 60,000 grain twin um, water softener okay so 60,000 divided by 30,000 is two cubic feet so each size side has two cubic feet of media okay that makes sense compensated hardness so again we use an example of 24 grains per gallon hardness and uh, 0.5 parts per million of iron so remember that formula I gave you earlier where I said for every one part per million of iron you have to compensate by five grains per gallon of hardness okay so for this one you would go uh, 24 uh, plus three right half of five is approximately three so it's 27 grains per gallon is your compensated and then your capacity so number of cubic feet per tank times 24,000 so remember I said 80 percent okay so in this example we've got 24,000 times two cubic feet so it's 48,000 so the calculated uh, grains per gallons per regeneration so then you divide the total capacity per tank, okay, which is 48,000. You're going to divide that by 27. The compensated hardness is 1.77. And then you multiply the 1,777 1, times 0 0.9, and you get 600 gallons of capacity per tank. So what happens is, at this point, you would set it for 1,600. Okay, let me, sorry, let me just uh, flip you back over here. So at this point, we would use the arrow up and we would go to 1600. So now what that means is if this was a twin 60,000 grain, if this was a twin 60,000 grain um, water softener, then it would use 600 gallons of capacity and then when it ran out of that capacity it would immediately switch over to the other tank this one would go into regeneration the other one would now be in service and you'd have um, softened water 24 7. okay and then you go next and uh, so when you get to this next setting go here you need to set this to on zero like that on zero next and off and uh, on zero means that once it hits 1600 takes it right down to zero it's going to flip over to the other tank all right so that was the the cc valve so now we can also talk about um the the classic ws1 clock ws1 and that's where we have five buttons in a row like this okay and uh, it's a lot simpler programming with that one and uh and, and by the way, um, to switch over from this valve, or sorry, this, yeah, from this valve, or the, the five button, the CC valve or the CI valve, is pretty simple. All you do is just unplug the power, unplug the motor. Actually, I'll zoom in a little bit for you here. 
undo the circuit board, this retainer at the top here, pull that forward, and out she comes. And I have another board here. So you have to realize that everything else in this valve, everything else is exactly the same. It's just this that's different. That's the only thing that's different. So you can put that in, line up the two tabs on the bottom. There it is. There. Push it back, plug in the motor. Plug in the power, and it sets back up. Whoops, and we put the right faceplate on here, yes. Okay, and uh, so now we've got the, the, the WS1 valve. Um, we do very little with this valve. I mean, we're, we're, a, we're a dealer for, for the clock valves, so because of that, we get a great deal on the uh, CC valve. So pretty much everything goes out of here with a CC valve unless it's a backwashing filter, and we'll talk about those. And those are the three-button valves, by the way. So, uh, and we'll talk about uh, those in a second. So, um, so with, with this, is, it's a much simpler valve. It has much less uh, parameters with the programming. Um, so let's just uh, quickly go through those. And uh, so again, we go set clock. Uh, let me show you a little bit closer here. Set clock, and the hours flash up or down. Set clock, the minutes flash up or down. Set clock, you're done. And again, to get into the programming, it's the next and the down button. And again, you can see this one says softening. I think you can see that, yep, softening. And then we go to next. And it asks you for the capacity, how many pounds of salt, and normal backwash. It's calculating the, the gallons automatically. It's a post fill, down brine, again, regen on normal. And this just tells you the programming that it's in. So you can see the settings are a lot simpler than they were uh, with the, the CC valve. And, uh, and again, to go into the installer settings, next and up. So again, this is where you would set the hardness. And, uh, and the hardness settings would be calculated exactly the same as it is for the CC valve. And uh, so let me go next. And the days override, next. Regen time. And again, it just shows you what the programming is. So that's, uh, that, that's very straightforward. But like I say, it's a key point that everything is the same except for the circuit board and the faceplate. Okay? And I should get back to uh, one thing I didn't mention about the... Oh, let's go back here. One thing I didn't mention when I was talking about uh, this one here. So some companies have three buttons here and two buttons here. They're all the same. Every, it, it, the, the program is exactly the same. Everything's exactly the same behind here. It's just the configuration is a little bit different. But uh, so it's all, it's all exactly the same. Let's, uh, let's take a quick look and uh, see if we got any uh, more. Um... Uh, comments here. All right. Okay, I'm just popped in, but thank you for your advice last time. Changing my RO filter to higher rate was much better. Glad to hear. I'm glad to, that I'm helping uh, you folks out. And uh, thanks for stopping back in again, KM. And uh, this one's here. FB, I love this man's dedication to teaching us. I didn't know my mom was on the computer today. Thanks. I, I appreciate comments like that. I really do. That's, uh, that's great. And, uh, and uh, here... Arturo, missed half of your presentation. Is there any chance to have the full video? Absolutely. Um, this, um, the video will be live. Um, uh, the full video will be live um, starting, um, I think it takes about 12 hours to process. So sometime tomorrow it will be live and you can watch it anytime you want from whatever stage you want and uh, definitely uh, a great resource for you. So, uh, but I encourage your comments. Please uh, keep submitting them. I really appreciate it. All right, moving right along. So, where are we here now? Okay, um, so now there's the four button valve. So, probably pretty much what you already imagine. 
was uh, here. Here's a four button valve. So I um, almost never use a four button valve. So I don't have a faceplate for it, but I do have the rest of this. So if we unplug this, unplug the motor, I will give you a little closer view up here. Flip this up here. Loosen up the circuit board. We can take that out. And we'll drop in that four button valve circuit board. Line up the pins. There we are. There. There. So again, make sure you plug in the motor first. If you if you if you if you plug this in and you find you're getting an error message, it's it's 99% because you forgot to plug in the motor first. All right. So it just goes through its initiation. All right, and it's that set. So again, we can see uh, similar information here. Um, yeah, you can see that. Okay, I think. So next up, down, regen. Okay. So we can start with next. Uh, sorry, we'll start with the. Um, so to set the clock, I believe you press the two buttons together. I'm wrong. So I think you just hold down the next button. No, that's not right either. Hold that down. There. We hold down the up button, the hours start to flash, and then uh, you can move the hours up or down. Press it again. And then next. Now the minutes start to flash. Like I said, I'm not that familiar with the four button, so sorry about that. Next again, and it's, it's set. And again, the, the rest of the programming is pretty much the same. Next and down together. Okay, so you would change it to either softening, uh, regen. So they give you three different settings here. Softening, regenerate, that would be basically an air over media type uh, system, an iron filter like we talked about earlier. Or if you're going to use it as a backwashing filter, um, you set it for this one. So a little bit different configuration. You, you end up in the same spot, but uh, you go through a few different steps. All right, so next. And uh, so down brine. Then post fill. So it's putting water in at the end of the cycles, and then it goes through the, the times and the cycles. So again, it doesn't allow you to change the cycles, etc. Nine and a half pounds of salt, 24,000 grains, automatic, normal regen, and the relay is off. So this can be, again, used in a number of different ways. Um, it's not something that... Uh, it's not a valve that, uh, like I say, we very seldom use this this valve. Um, it's it's called the um, EI, I believe, the four button valve. So uh, so that's that one. And then let's move on to the three button valve. So the three button valve is often called the TC valve, and TC stands for time clock. So one thing I'd like to show you about the, 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 the TC valve or the three button, okay? So let's have a look at these two circuit boards here, okay? So you see the one in this hand, okay? Do you see this button at the top? Okay, this is for the battery backup, okay? This is an older one, and the older ones didn't have a battery backup. And it was a huge pain, especially in cottage country where power goes off quite a bit or fluctuates and that kind of thing. It was a pain because every time the power went off, even if it just flickered, you had to reset the time on this. And it was a huge pain. And then some years ago, they came out with the, with it, uh, with the power cell backup, which it really should have had right from the beginning. But, uh, but again, if you've got one that, 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 and, and it's a pain for you because um, the, the, um, when the power goes off, you have that same issue. Don't worry, you can always just switch it over. And again, this just fits right in here. 
like that slots right in and again you just hook up the motor hook up the power and up it comes so as I mentioned a little bit earlier where's the face plate here as I mentioned a little bit earlier this three button we only use it for What's it telling us here? So we only use this one for uh, backwashing filters. Okay. So. So to set the time, so you can see. Oh, let me zoom in here for you. Sorry about that. Um, so you can see up here the time is flashing. Okay, and you can see this arrow down here that indicates the time. Okay, so again, up or down, set, minutes flash, up or down. And again, that was a, a problem um, before with the, with the older uh, circuit board that you had because it wouldn't let you set the minutes. You could only set the hours. So you could only set the, the current time for 7 p.m or 8 p.m. You couldn't set it for 8.30 or 9.15 or something like that. Same with the regen. You couldn't do that. So it was a real pain. And uh, all right. OK, let me see if I can get out of here. No, it doesn't like that. OK. So, so days to regen, you can set this for two or three. Again, for a backwashable filter, I don't know why it keeps doing that. So this is where you would set which days you wanted to regen. So you can set it for day one. Set. Day two, day three. And over here, you're indicating on whether you want it on or off those days. keeps doing that. Let's see here. Let's try to reset it. So how you reset these valves is exactly what I just did there. You just unplug it and uh, that resets the valve. So let me see if it comes back on here. Well, it's unhappy about something. I don't know. I'll have to do a bit of research and get back to you on that one. That's uh, that's highly unusual what just happened there. So, uh, like I say, that's the thing when you're on a live stream, right? You never know what's going to happen. So, <laughs> all right. Um, let's move on here. Um, okay. So, if you do have a three-button valve, if you do have a three button water and it's used for a water softener and it's time clock, all you have to do is change three things to convert it over to a CC valve like this and get all the benefits of that. But the biggest benefit, of course, is that if your water softener is a three button valve and it's a time clock, then that means you have to set to regenerate every four days or every three days or every five days. You don't have the, the benefit of the metering, which makes a huge difference and makes it far more efficient. And uh, so to do that, there's only three parts you have to change. So one part is the faceplate, right? We know that. The next thing we have to change is the circuit board. Okay, we know that. Unplug this. And here. Circuit board. Oops. 
Any idea what the third part is that we'd have to change? I'll give you a hint. You have to add something. What you have to add is the meter. So, so this is the meter here. Okay, and uh, so let me just plug it in and I'll show you what it does. When meter is here. So when I do this, sorry, let me see a little closer here. You see filtering flashing up there? If we set this and change that to softening and take it through the settings. Okay, so it's home now. So you see that softening flashing up there? That tells you that it's metering or it's counting down the gallons of water. And uh, so that's the difference. So we add the meter. Where does the meter go? Right here. Okay. So all you do is just unscrew this like so. And with a screwdriver or in Canada, we have something called a loony. We use a loony or something like that. And then what you can do is you would, I mean, you would feed the cable through the back here through the back here where the power goes through. Uh, I'm not going to bore you by uh, holding up watching that. And then we feed this in here, like so. Put the cap back on. And tighten that down. Put the faceplate back on. This one here. Whoops. This guy here. Of course, the cable would be routed through, so the faceplate would actually fit, and uh, and then uh, and then you convert it. Everything else behind here is all the same. Okay. Now you can't convert a filter that's used for backwashing sediment out of your water or whatever, and make that into a water softener just by doing those parts. There's more parts involved in that. But what I'm talking about here is you've got a, a time clock, three button uh, clock valve that's used just for softening. You can three parts you can switch it over to with the, the premium CC valve and you'll save a lot of money on salt, a lot of uh, less wasted water and your family will definitely be happier. All right so let's see where we are here. Okay we talked about that, talked about that, talked about that. Okay let's see if we got any, any more comments here. Um, just go up to here and see Tim K thanks Gary very informative the clack is set set it and forget it well that's true you know I mean with the power cell backup with um, uh, it has a lot going for it now one thing I should mention about the power cell backup so the power cell backup on all the valves we talked about except for those really old uh, time clock three button valves um, it only lasts about an hour and a half so after that hour and a half, do you have to reprogram the whole valve? Absolutely not. All you have to program is the current time. Okay. So just keep that in mind. It's pretty straightforward um, if you have uh, something like that. And um, uh, one tip. Um, these are electronic and these circuit boards are not inexpensive. So if you need to replace the, the circuit board, you're going to find that out. It's expensive. So one way to minimize that is by getting one of these babies it's just a power bar okay but it's more than a power bar it's not sorry it's not just a power bar it's a surge suppressor okay if you have an expensive TV or you have a computer at home you've been advised to plug it into one of these to protect the electronics I recommend the same thing for your water filtration equipment okay if you have two or three pieces of equipment like this and you have an ultraviolet light because you're on well water or whatever super super cheap insurance and uh, so I hope I gave you a lot of information. I know I gave you a lot of information today. I hope you understood it. If you didn't, please add your questions in the comments down below. And uh, and by the way, we um, I do release uh, new videos every single week, every single week 
I release them 5 a.m. Eastern Time every Saturday morning. The only exception is when I do a live stream like this week. Uh, this live stream will take the place of that. I'll be promoting it over the next couple of days. And, uh, and like the, the one uh, person asked there a little bit earlier, we will, um, we will um, be, uh, be having that live for you. And I really encourage you to subscribe. Um, that way you're notified about all the new videos they become available on this channel and uh, a lot of great information here. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.